Okay, uh, we went ahead and talked about the overview of, of what Git is. Let's give a quick example of using it. So I'm going to start off with an example where we've already set up the repository, and I'll, I'll show one a quick example of cloning a repository. Um, but if I'm sitting there and I, I wake up in the morning, I look at my project, I, I move to the directory it's in, and I can look ls, and I can see all sorts of uh, files here, and I might go and start editing some text. So I might go and look at facts.txt, and I might go ahead and do stuff like uh, line three. Hey, I just added a line here. Okay, uh, great. One thing I can do is I can say git status. And what we see here is uh, on branch master, your branch is up to date with origin master, meaning my local repo is, is not behind. Nobody's been changing the central repo while I've been working on my, with my local repo in its workspace. Um, Changes not staged for commit. Uh, okay, so modified facts.txt. So I've modified that file and I have not yet committed it to my local repository, okay? So uh, also it says there are some untracked files, uh, pics.html. So that's a file that was actually generated from another file, so I don't want it to be in the repo. Uh, but it's reminding me, I use git add in the file name if I do want to actually add it to the re repository. So I might go ahead and say uh, git commit dot, hey, add everything in this directory that's been changed, not the ones that I haven't added, only parts files that are in the repository. Um, great, and it comes up with an editor, uh, vi is my default editor on the command line here. Uh, please enter the commit message. I made an awesome new line in the file. Okay, um, all that other stuff with the panel will be ignored. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, quit the editor, and it gives me a little message, uh, master 00d7bf8, I made an awesome new line in the file. One file changed, one insertion, so that one line was inserted into that file. Uh, I can go ahead and do things like get status. Um, that's actually the same information that, uh, oh, that, that, I already did that, didn't I? Okay, never mind. Um, but it now says on branch master, my branch is ahead of the central repo of origin master. Okay, uh, there's still that untracked file. Okay, uh, git log. Okay, I want to find out, uh, I want to look at the recent commits and so on. And here we have a commit and it gives a big long, it's actually the hash code of the file after I made the commit. Uh, but yeah, it has the author, the date, and the little line, I made an awesome new line on the file. Uh, we see commits before that by other people with a little one-line uh, submission there, and I could keep going. Um, that big hash code, uh, if you ever want to, there are many ways to refer to previous commits and previous versions. That big hash code is the canonical way of doing it if you ever want to roll your project back to a, a certain point or something like that. So, okay. Um, yeah, so I've done uh, git status, git commit. Uh, Git diff, and if I don't even give any file names at all, uh, oh, nothing, because I haven't changed them. Let's go make another change to that file. Uh, facts.txt, uh, and even a second line, and a second line. Okay, uh, and now I can go ahead and say git diff, and it'll actually show me um, the difference between my working copy and my local repo is, look, looks like that's what the, the difference is here. Okay, and again, I can say git diff and I can give a particular file name, I can give a file name and talk about a previous version or a version that's you know four versions ago. Uh, and again, I'll let you look up and get tutorials how to do that. This is just a bare bones introduction here. So, okay. And when you're finally done, you can go ahead and say git push, and that will push changes from my repo to the central repository. And actually, I'll do that in a moment, but I want to talk about also, uh, before I do a git push, I might do a git pull. Hey, has anybody uh, uh, come in and made any changes? Oops, invalid password. Let me go and look up my password here for a second. Uh, it's a big, long, uh, random password. Okay, 
Um, so that again, git pull, type in a password, uh, and it says, hey, I'm already up to date. Okay. Uh, if there had been some changes made, it might incorporate those. Uh, let's go and, and try some different things. Oh, we'll go ahead and try the git push now. Git pull, then git push. Do my password again. Uh, give some information, counting objects, three done, compressing objects. Okay. Um, great. Um, one other, uh, this is the other thing I forgot to mention on the previous lecture, one other really cool thing about using Git, uh, it's kind of like having things in the cloud, you can access them anywhere, but you know, here's the nice thing, uh, I find I do this sometimes, I just want to experiment with one little change, I don't really want to ever commit it, I just want to see what would happen if I did such and such, uh, and I don't want to change my working copy, I'm in the middle of doing a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so the nice thing is I can go to some other directory, I'll open up a separate window here, and make it bigger. Uh, and I'm just going to do a directory called temp, and I can say git clone and give the name of the repository. I'm going to use that same repository that I'm doing. So I'm going to actually have two local versions of this repository at different places on my disk. Um, and the way I use this, use this most commonly is I'm like, I just want to make a quick one-off copy, clone it, make some changes, and then just delete that file, throw it away. Um, and just as a quick experiment. So, uh, gosh, what was the name of this repository? And that's what is an example of doing clone. If this uh, project is already set up, then you need to know how to get to the project, uh, to that repository, how to name it. Uh, there are two uh, major uh, places right now that are good for hosting Git projects. There's Bitbucket and um, uh, GitHub. Uh, I have some stuff on Bitbucket here. It's fine, I've logged into Bitbucket, it shows me some stuff. I can look at my repositories. Here's a recently reviewed repository, it shows me an overview, four branches. Recent activity, one commit. Uh, I made an awesome new line in the, okay, yeah. And I can actually view it through the web here. Uh, again, I'm gonna do everything through the command line. Um, so to clone it, uh, and it turns out I'm using, I, I don't wanna clone it through SSH, that doesn't work for me. I'm gonna clone it through HTTPS. The nice thing is, um, the Bitbucket does is it provides me this URL. I'm going to copy that, go back to this other window, say git clone paste, and it's going to want the password to make sure I'm authorized. Oh, and now I need to go get that password again. Uh, big long randomized password. Okay. Um, and now it's going to it's actually grabbing this from the central repository and copying the entire central repository to a second one on my disk. So each of these two terminal windows is going to be its own different repository. And so one thing I'm going to try now end up with is I'm going to make a change to the same place in a file in both repositories and just sort of see what the message is that does that. Okay. Okay, so we've grabbed that file. Let's go again to uh, facts.txt in our little temporary copy of the repo. Um, oops. Oh, I just need to go into the, uh, I just downloaded the repository. Um, so I need to actually go into that one that I just made. Okay. Uh, so here I have the, uh, Hey, I just added a line here. Whoa. Um, added a great little line here. So that's what one person is doing. In the meantime, back in some other directory, uh, somebody's going and we haven't synchronized things yet. So I'm still working on my copy. Um, and there's that second line that I added that's not yet been committed. So uh, yeah, we can go ahead and uh, even the second line. Uh, how about we just get rid of the line that was edited on the first one and leave and even a second line. Uh, and back on this one, we'll also add a line. So we have things added, we have things deleted, we have things changed. Um, line before the previous edition. Okay. So now we go ahead and we can do a get status between this version of the, uh, we have one file that's changed, no problem. So uh, we can use git commit dot, again a commit message, 
made changed the intro paragraph. Okay. And now let's go back to this version here and do a git status. We've changed something relative to this local repository. Remember, we have two local repositories, different ones, and then the central one. Okay, so let's go ahead and commit uh, to this local repository, git commit uh, dot, um, and this time we'll say improve the opening paragraph. Okay, whatever. Now, is this going to work? Or is it going to give a conflict? Remember, commit goes from here to the local repository, one of the two local repositories, so that's going to work just fine. Again, this is me working on the airplane, making commits, making log messages, uh, so when I get off the airplane, I'll have, you know, if I made five different commits, all those five will get updated and people can roll back to any of the five that I was on in the middle of the airplane. So, okay. So great. Um, I'm ready to go and uh, fix this back to the central repository. I do a git pull and put in my password. Everything up to date. Okay, so git push. Type in my password. Great, I pushed the central repo. No conflict again. Ah, but this poor old schlub over here in this window. They'll do a, they're getting ready to commit. Now again, I advise before doing a git push, uh, do a git pull to see if there's been any changes. And this time there has. Um, okay, and it says, so conflict. Uh, merge conflict in facts.txt. Automatic merge failed. Fix the conflicts, then commit the results. Okay, so and it tells me which file it was. Uh, auto merging facts.txt. That's important. So let's go and look at facts.txt. And here's what you need to know. Uh, it's actually marked the changes. Uh, there's one version up here with these two lines, uh, and that's the version that I had. Here in my local repo, uh, the bottom one is the what ended up on the is in the central repository. So it shows me it says, "Hey, everything outside this angle bracket region is the same, but here's here's the difference." And it'll show me sort of a think of it as a before and after sort of thing, um, if you will, um, with a. And so now I can look at those changes and figure out how what's the right way to do it. Uh, Say so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of it all. Get rid of it all. Okay, um, now, again, it didn't let me push. I've made changes. I'm going to commit to my local repo. Um, oh, can't commit during a merge. Okay, so let me fix that, actually. Okay, quick Google, Google search. Uh, I wasn't ready for that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it says, hey, but when you're doing this, you're, they have this extra phase called staging, and, again, I'm having on with the details, but I'm on the command line. I need to go ahead and say git. Uh, commit and include uh, the new version of the file facts.txt. Okay, um, and I can go ahead and say the that as well. And now, sort of, and this is again, this is you'd use that dash i flag when you're concluding a conflict in a merge, um, and you learn that through Google, I guess. Okay, so it says conflicts fact.txt. You might be committing a merge. Blah blah blah. Okay, so but I am doing that. Um, so. Update the. Uh, don't even see. Overwrite other incorrect first paragraph. Um, okay. So finish that. Uh, there is an edit problem with the editor vi. Please supply the message using dash m. Uh, okay. So I'll go ahead and I won't even say dot. I'll go ahead and uh, include dash m. Copy paste. All right then. Okay, uh, that seems to have worked. Now I can go ahead and do a git again. That's committing it to my local re repo. Say git status. Um, I'm ahead by two commits to the origin master. Um, git diff. I'm okay with my local repo. And git push to publish your local commits. Okay, get that password there. 
Okay. Now I'm going to go back to this window, and I, again I say get status, everything's fine. Get pull, everything's I just committed from this one, so everything's fine there, uh, up to date. Uh, here I'm going to do a git pull, and it's going to say, hey, okay, uh, counting objects, six objects, I'm not sure what all six objects are, but uh, we've gone ahead and made these changes. Fast forward, it's gone ahead and give me one file change, one deletion. Um, not sure what that one deletion means, but I can look at it. I can say vi facts.txt, and now we get a deleted all those extra lines, so we're, we're right there. So. Okay, um, that one deletion might actually be the fact that I've we've made it. Actually, I've gone full circle. We're back in the exact same file we started with, um, and it actually recognizes because it keeps the hash of every single file. When you go back, if you have the same file that's you know exactly there three times in the commit, it only keeps one copy of that locally, uh, and is smart about doing things like that. So, okay. Uh, and that's all I have to show you about doing that using git. Uh, remember the mantra? What is it? What are the, the, the four git commands you use? Wake up in the morning, git pull, then do your editing. Um, git commit, again, again git commit dot is the one I prefer. Uh, and then when you're ready, uh, git, or git commit followed by git pull, you might alternate those two very often. And then finally, at the end of the day, when you're at a stable place, get push. Okay, thanks a lot. Do, 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 do.